name is Jean-Philippe, Jean-Philippe with piano, as you can read here. Uh, so um, I created a small game, uh, which is named Candy Cat, and uh, the goal of this game is, well, maybe to have a little fun, but mostly, actually, is to try to share uh, software best practices. So um, I created this game so that it has sufficient, let's say, complexity. And uh, out of this complexity, what I wanted is uh, to uh, propose uh, some challenges. So uh, the first challenge is to analyze the program and have a cl clear understanding how it works. Then there are other challenges, which are something like uh, either extending the features of the game or uh, maybe even correcting some bugs where some of them were left on pure pause. So how to install this game? It's uh, actually mentioned here, so it's quite simple. And you start it with Python Candy Cat. So let's try it and let's see first what this game does. So up, up. <laughs> Good, I ended up in an infinite loop. Good, this time I got it. So now I'm going to the next level, and that's it. So, this is the game. Now, uh, the goal is to be able to analyze the software generating or allowing or making this game. So if we look at the uh, code itself, what we see, we have a certain number of um, uh, directories. And uh, in these various directories, of course, then we have some source code. So um, let me go back. So we see domain infrastructure. We can see domain additional um, uh, Python scripts and uh, go back to sprites, going to base classes, I see additional uh, code. So what we see, there is quite some code actually at the end and uh, having a clear understanding how the program is structured could be a little, let's say, overwhelming. And uh, how to make sure that we have the proper understanding that uh, the uh, author, so in that case me, uh, of the program really had in mind and how to make sure that either we can propose suge or suggest uh, improvements following software best practices or maybe extend the game if we consider software best, pr best practices are properly followed. So one easy, uh, what I usually recommend uh, to try to analyze the structure of the programs is to uh, reverse engineer them in some so-called class diagrams or UML class diagrams. So um, how can we do that? We can use some tools. Uh, some of them are to be need to be paid. Others are uh, open source, but not very powerful, actually. I wanted something to have or a, a way to be able to extract sufficient information from the code and uh, be able to analyze that and at least working for this tool. So I created another small program that is named uh, plant py to plant uml. So it requires plant uml, and um, this small program will be able to generate some plant uml class diagrams out of your source code. So how does that work? I will show you quickly. Yep. I open my other shell. And I'll start it. So there is a shell script associated with the py where we have to define to define where the source uh, Python source code relies and where the generated file should be uh, stored. We start it, it generates a lot of files and what we see, it says, please open this file in your browser. So it should be opening automatically at the moment. It doesn't work very well, but uh, let me try that. I'm not sure it's fully ready already. Yes, it looks it's, it's ready already. So what do we see now? We see actually uh, some classes, actually maybe a lot of classes actually, and a lot of uh, dependencies between these classes, which make this program actually very hard to uh, really understand at the first sight, right? So now, how can we uh, dig a little further? So what I usually like is to have a view based on something called uh, a grouping per namespace. So I have here a link 
a full diagram detailed a group per namespace. I go here and now I have namespace domain sprites. And I see I can start looking at my, my diagram. I see this is a namespace domain, so it is a directory we saw before. And we see all the classes that are inside it. So from the name, actually, we can fairly assume that domain is a business logic of the program. What we see as well is services. So what is very interesting, we see in services, we see some classes, so they have dependencies on others, right? And we see as well these classes, which has a, a lot of dependencies on others, but they don't have dependencies on, on this class it, itself. So could be a good hint that uh, some of these classes are really uh, the starting point of the program. So we have here, you see a lot of uh, dependencies here. Where are we? We are in infrastructure. So infrastructure certainly means we are uh, hiding away some uh, lower level accesses. So GUI library means certainly that we are hiding away actually the, the GUI library. So in that case, it's PYA. And we are making sure that uh, if we want to use something different, we just have to implement the proper logic within these classes. So this is what it looks like if I at the first sight, I would say. Now we see read game from file, and uh, read game from file is certainly uh, an adapter to make sure that we can access um, uh, the, the, the hard disk uh, through uh, some um, uh, high level, uh, um, I say, uh, representation <coughs> of the access. Another thing that is interesting is repository. So we see repository, file score saver. And this file score server seems to be linked because there are so many connections, but it is linked because we can see it here, right? File score saver, and it is linked with this one. So, okay, it has a dependencies to file score server. So, wh what is this other line what we, that we can see here if we follow it? We see score saver. So, now I have a question actually. So, I see a class or an interface somehow that is our abstract class that is named score saver. But why do I need this abstract class? Because it looks like it's never used, so maybe I could simply stick to file score saver. So this is the first question I would have, and then I would think maybe maybe I should remove this class. So I go to the source code, which is here. By the way, it's score handler. Uh, so this is my score handler, and I see my score saver. Is that the correct one? Uh, let me check again. Um, sorry. One second. So I have here my file score saver, and then it's going to score saver. So score saver is here. So now it would be interesting to see whether this score saver is really not used. I click on it, and uh, VS Code will tell me well, look, it's used actually, uh, actually here, uh, right? And here as well. And what we can see here is actually we are keeping it in some um, uh, member, but the link was not present because actually the author, so me, uh, forgot this. Sorry, uh, score saver. Right, so if I do that and now I restart the generation. I would expect that the missing connection would now be ready and uh, so it means actually I should in no way remove this abstract class. So I just realized clicking on the abstract class that is, it is being used that by more than uh, just uh, its child class but by other classes as well. So let's see now if we can see that. And uh, I can search for it. Uh, let me just copy it so it's core saver and search it in the SVG. And first I see it here. And yes, we can see that this core handler now has a, a dependency on score saver. So first we fix this problem. And on top of that, we, we are starting understanding a little more of this program. So when we start with this uh, kind of huge program, what can be very useful is to say is to uh, either start from um, a, a namespace that we consider is interesting, for example, infrastructure or domain or a repository, 
or maybe start from services because services are at the highest level. So now I would like to understand actually I have a, a create scene service here and how this create scene, uh, create scene service is linked with other classes. Click on it. And actually, this is what this program does. It is able to filter out uh, actually all what is not related directly with create, create scene service. So I see here all the classes that uh, either need create scene service. In that case, no classes need it. But as well, all the classes that create scene service needs. And uh, then I can start analyzing further and start understanding how my program is actually um, structured. And once I understood how it is structured, then I can start thinking in terms of doing some changes in my program. So that's all. So this was a very uh, small presentation of uh, this tool that I find for myself very useful. So. It can be found here if from the license it is MIT so you can reuse it for free and uh, even create a great uh, tool out of it that you can resell if you wish please follow still the license requirements and uh, which do not require anything to be paid but still a few requirements still need to be followed and you have here the few files so remember this one single file will soon be uh, transformed into a couple of files so once when you watch this video it could be that it's it was already refactored so wish you a lot of fun with that and uh, then maybe because it is the end of the year starting a good new year